Hi there, Tim with Majota Labs. Today we are going to be looking at Kaivo and how it fits into your computer's ecosystem as well as going over some of the dials and controls. A lot of Kaivo's controls act exactly how you would expect them to, but some of them have some really cool tricks up their sleeve. But first things first, Kaivo is not a standalone instrument on your computer. It actually is a plugin. So what you need to do is put it into one of your DAWs or digital audio workstations. In this case, I'm using Bitwig. Uh, so what I do is I set up a uh, soft synth track and then go in to choose my voice. I'm going to go into my Madrona Labs folder, pick Kaivo, and boom, there is Kaivo. But before we get into the dials and the controls, uh, I do want to talk about the preset section here. So up here in the header module, you can see uh, it says Kaivo default here. If you click on that, you get a nice drop down menu and you can see all of these presets and preset categories. Um, so these are meant to be a small but very well-rounded set of sounds that uh, you'll come back to often. So let's just talk about the preset categories really quick. We have Kaibo keys. These are a bunch of tuned sounds that respond well to you know your MIDI keyboard and some verge towards uh, acoustic sounds, but there's also a lot of synthetic sounds in there. And then next up, we have Kaibo machines. These are pretty experimental and fun. They kind of have a mind of their own. A lot of them don't respond very well to actually playing the keyboard uh, by design design and then uh, some of them actually need a host uh, clock to run and we'll talk about host clocks and clocking everything in a future video. Um, next up we have pads. These are tuned atmospheric and spacey sounds with really long attack and decay times. So these are good for nice ambient long floating pieces. And then there's the percussion section that doles out all sorts of fun rhythmic patterns. Kaivo techniques are simple patches that can help you learn how to use Kaivo. So this might be a good place to start if you uh, you know, just wanna take it slow and really wrap your head around it. And then Kaivo textures, these are complex cinematic uh, environments that evolve. And then beyond uh, the Kaivo presets, there's a separate group of presets made by artists. So we have Heinbach, Jesse Jupe. There's some MIDI programs in here. Uh, we'll talk about that later. Scary Ice Water is one that I made, and then I made my own folder, so you can make your own folder of presets, um, and then Voltage Disciple. But if you've made it this far in your synthesis journey and you're interested in Kaivo, then presets might not be what you're after. So how do we go beyond the presets in Kaivo? I think the first step to really wrapping your head around Kaivo and getting the most out of it is to understand the dials. So like any knob on any piece of gear, it provides basically two functions. Uh, it allows you to manipulate your signal, and then it also provides a little bit of visual feedback. So in the case of this level right here, we can just turn that up or down. And now we are manipulating the level of the output and also seeing the value at which we are putting it out. However, whereas most knobs inform you merely about a single unchanging value, Kaivo's dials act as tiny signal viewers as well. Uh, this means they not only show you the value you've adjusted that parameter to, but they also show you the values that they're being pushed and pulled to uh, from the incoming modulation. So let's see that in action. As I'm turning up this value here, we're getting our standard visual feedback. However, if I bring this uh, looping envelope into the level input here, now we're seeing that dial pop up every time the envelope hits it. So cool, we have this simple visual feedback happening here from our envelope, but I wanna show you one more really cool feature. If I take this level and manually turn it up a little bit, hit it with this envelope, but then send an LFO into the signal as well, watch what happens. You can see that line is now dipping below the uh, level that I set the dial to because the LFO has positive and negative values. So obviously we can click and drag, but we can also put our cursor over the dial and use the scrolling wheel to adjust. At slow speeds, each click of the scroll wheel corresponds to the smallest currently visible uh, increment of the dial. 
and then scrolling faster accelerates that change. Also, you can click just outside of the dial and drag it up and down. And as I mentioned earlier, you can double click the value and bring it back to its default position. I want to take a moment to talk about the detents. So some dials such as the granulator pitch have detents. Detents are useful default positions. So we'll get this envelope opening this up again. Now if I go to the granulator and grab the pitch dial and move it, you'll see that it's moving around in one octave increments. But what if we want to make really fine adjustments? Let's go to this pitch section here. If I grab and drag here, I'm going up and down in full octave ranges. But if I hold shift and then grab that, and I can do really, really, really fine adjustments. So there are also dial scales. So while many dials are linear, meaning the change per degree from high to low is constant, uh, some dials have logarithmic scales where the change is much larger as the value gets higher. This was done in cases in which a logarithmic scale matches uh, the changes you perceive better than a linear one does. So like an oscillator's pitch, for example. So in a logarithmic scale, equal movements of the mouse in different positions on the dial will produce differently sized changes. So we go 1, 2, 3.5, 7, 14, 27, and so on. So some controls, such as those pertaining to the X and Y position on the LFO and the sustain of envelope one, they just made a lot more sense as linear bars rather than dials. Uh, so while calling them dials seems a little weird, everything about these controls, both viewing and setting them, is the same as everything we've talked about so far, except for the geometric layout of them. Also, if this visual feedback becomes a little overwhelming for you, you can come up to the header and go to the Animate Dials on the Settings tab and just click that, and now um, those are turned off. So the numeric values here that you see under the dials, they don't represent the modulation coming into the signal. They just represent the level that you manually set it at. And much like the animation that's on the dials that shows the incoming signals, uh, you can also turn the numbers off if you're not a numbers person. And then finally in our controls section, we have buttons and switches. They're pretty simple. So right here you can see under the low pass here, I have it in low pass mode. If I just click that, we are not in low pass mode now. Uh, the follow, sync, and wrap, those are all buttons. And then this chorus over here is a switch and it works the same as the button. Uh, it just each click brings it to a different position within the switch. Okay, so that was our video on our dials and our presets. We are going to dive into the input dials more in a future video. Um, and we're also going to be going through each module in greater detail in future videos. So be sure to subscribe and hit the notification button so you can be notified as soon as these new videos are released. Thank you for watching.